So if you've been cutting up your scraps, working on a traffic jam, <laughs> Who wants to work on a traffic jam? I just love that name. It's my scrappy sew along we've been doing here in January. And I wanna bring you up to date on the other sew alongs we have going on. This is Pat Sloan. Welcome to my fireside chat in my studio. So we have on Wednesday, this is what's coming up. On Wednesday is Block Wednesday. And that is our childhood games. And so I am so excited. I've got the pattern ready. And so Wednesday morning, it'll be on the website. And if you signed up for the emails, those will come out um, by noon time. It doesn't come out when the block comes out, just in case, uh, you know, I need to do something. So that's what that'll be coming out on Wednesday. And then because we're at the end of the month, that uh, we'll have the next out west block will probably be Friday. I don't know for sure. Otherwise, it'll be Monday. Remember, our first one was the Western movies. This is the theme behind our block, and so many of you have done this block. So I want to be sure that you've also posted it over at my website, your photos of your out west block. And I've made the second block, and I have the pattern being edited. So yay! I'm excited about that. Also this week coming up is the charity quilt along. So it is scheduled for February 1, but because you're watching this, shh, it's going to come out on Friday, you know, because people have Saturday off. So hold on, let me just show you. I've got stuff back here on my rolling assistant. All right, grab this. I am doing the charity quilt along with my Bonnie Lane fabric. So you want to see the blocks in Bonnie Lane? I'll show you some of them. I have a few of them done. The, here is, these are some of the blocks that will be coming out on Friday. You can do it this way. However you like to turn it. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? I just love how it's looking. So here's the second block in the Bonnie Lane. And those both come out on the first release. Now I'll show you the second release block, which is the Carolina Lily. <gasps> look, 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 look. Isn't that wonderful? I love, I would like a whole quilt of Carolina Lilies. When we did the fig tree, um, Christmas fig tree quilt, there was a Carolina Lily in there. And I think I said the same thing. I'm like, I want a whole quilt of Carolina Lilies. Though, so maybe someday I will do that. Okay, I'll show you one more done in Bonnie Lane and you can uh, get a bundle and some background fabric I have listed and you can do your blocks in Bonnie Lane too. Let me just turn this light off here. Whoops, hold on one second. There we go, getting too much glare there. I always forget that light. So there we go, there's another Bonnie Lane uh, charity quilt along and the charity is supporting Make-A-Wish Foundation and we're hoping, what is she we hoping for? Five, to do five wishes this year, which is a lot, you know, because they're usually fairly expensive. Uh, so it's nice that all of you are raising funds for that. And, and a lot of people have paid like a lump sum up front so that you can just download every, every time a new pattern comes. You don't have to pay by pattern. And I want to thank you so much for doing that. That is amazing. Uh, so we, you've done really well. There's a lot of people who have done that. So we're already at a pretty high number. Uh, plus, plus we have the cross stitch portion that'll be doing for this uh, so along this year for the charity, which is new. And, uh, and you know, I'm a baby cross stitcher. Like I am a novice. And so <laughs> I'm gonna try it because it's not hard. Cross stitch isn't hard. It's just, there's, uh, there's parts of it that can make it look a ton nicer, but I'm doing everything very simple and just to do it. So mine will be a novices. <laughs> we all have to start somewhere, right? No matter what you're doing, everybody has to start at the beginning. We don't all come in with all the skills, but if you're already sewing anything by hand, uh, cross stitch is, is going to be a comfortable thing for you to do. So if you want to do the cross stitch with me as well, I hope you do. It'll be super fun. I, uh, I don't know what background, but it's going to be the big holes again, the Ada cloth. I think it's 10 I'm using, which is probably like giant baby, you know, holes for the novices, but 
it's, it's okay. And in a little bit here today, I will show you my cross stitch because I promised every week to tell you how I'm doing, which is motivating me to work on it. So I did work on it. So some of the other things that we've been doing is the Orifil Block of the Month came out, which is where I interview a designer. So we have 12 designers and the designers have created incredible things. Back on the wall there is the one by Blair in the gray, because remember our first city is Milan and the Milan box is the gray threads. So here are the gray threads. And so that is the, so you can collect these, which is fabulous because then you can have a really super great color collection by the end of the year because every box is a different color. So let me show you, oh, let me just show you what next, next month is February. So what color do you think it is? Tick tock, tick tock, red, of course, <laughs> of course it's red. So it's Pompeii, like that is so exciting. And there's always a little story on the back that tells you, and I give you this um, on the day, but you are, you're going to be so fascinated by the designer of the month for February. Um, Kathy Ross, who is a, uh, she's from Scotland. I think she's from Scotland and she's a thread painter. Uh, and I'm going to show you, a. she's done her block with her signature technique. And I will show you uh, how I would do it with without her technique. So it'll be really neat to see them side by side and that'll be the 15th of next month. But from now until then, you need to enter your block. You need to make the block. Here's mine for the so long. You need to make your block and then go over to Orifil and enter it because someone will win each month three of these. They'll get each quarter. So like be like month one, two, and three for those three months, those winners will get those boxes. So that's pretty cool. Now, this was foundation paper pieced. And uh, some people haven't done that before. So I just want to show you a little tip on the back because sometimes um, we all get a little nutty and we think, oh, that's hard, when it actually isn't hard at all. We're just dealing with paper. You use this foundation for a couple reasons. This is just regular paper, whatever my printer paper is. There are a lot nicer printers if you're doing a lot of foundation work because they'll, they're thinner and they will rip off nicer. But, but when you're only doing a little bit, just use what you have. It's totally fine. So it was only for the blocks. So here I left two of the papers on and here you can see that I took them off. Now I do not get crazy and try to peel every tiny little piece of paper out. You know that when paper, if you wash this, when paper gets wet, that will just disintegrate in, in the quilt and it's just a fiber, you know, like it's not a big deal. But if you want to, you can go through and get all the little bits out. I don't bother. So when I want to take this paper off, I'm pretty much lifting up and using my nail to sort of hold along the seam line and then pull it. And then once, once I can get underneath here, I'll just get it started like that row and just pull it down. And, and I'm sure there's like many techniques people have, but it doesn't take long and there's only a couple of them and then you're done. So I've got it pulled, pulled off here. I will shorten my stitches so that because you are sort of tugging on them, you're doing this, it's nicer if your stitch length is shorter when you're foundation paper piecing. So there I got started on that one. So this is the block, my version of the block, because I am doing different fabrics and I'll show you the fabrics I'm using because they are a new line by my friend Lindsay and it's called flower, like flower sacks, F-L-O-U-R. And uh, they're so gorgeous. Here's like, look at this. It looks like old flower sacks, but in these kind of cool, I just, this green, oh my gosh, I love that green. And here's like, look at the little prints. So there's tiny little prints and whoops, sorry about that. And some bigger ones. There's another pretty floral. I'm using this as, a, I'm gonna use this as my basic, which is Blossom by Christopher, um, the tattoo quilter. So here's another really pretty piece that that's what the border is on, on the block. So then there's like a plaid, I like the aqua plaid. 
So, oh, here's this one in aqua. <gasps> I love this. I don't know. I love that. I gotta use that next. So this is my uh, container to keep the orophil in. And I've gotta go get that one off the wall then. So let me just put that box, whoops, over there. Whee! I didn't get it on the floor, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> So I think, uh, I think I've gone through everything that's going on at the moment, but traffic jam, let's go back to that. This is scraps. And I, have, I had a scrap discussion over the weekend and I hope you saw it. There was, I had gone to my, I have my rolling assistants. I brought both of them. I have two rolling assistants at the moment. So I brought the second one over, which is usually on the other side of my table. And that's where I had these stacks of fabrics. You know, I showed you like I had all these stacks and I've been working through them to cut them up. And I wanted to just talk about that a little bit more because some people were still like, you know, I did, I did a little video where I showed you how I sorted it, but let me just say it verbally. So <laughs> I wrote it all out for you. I'll tell you too. Uh, so when I get a stack like this, I've already sort of made it tidy, but I want to see first what is fairly small so that I can do the two and a half inch square so I can cut, you know, cut them up for this, for the, for the traffic jam blocks. Uh, and if they're the lights, like this grouping, I'm also going to cut a bunch of the four, four and a half, which are the corners of the traffic jam, because I want to have these to do a red and white traffic jam. The one on the wall has the, has the blue dots. So when I, let's take a look here. So when I am working on this, let me just move this cord a minute. Okay, so when I'm working on this, I want to find the smaller pieces. Okay, so like here's a small piece. So I can decide, can I, do I want to cut a four and a half and then cut the rest, you know, two and a halfs out of this? Uh, anything that's fairly small, I'll kind of make those decisions. If it's too small, I'll just do two and a halfs right away. But then sometimes there's a piece that's a little bit bigger like this one. And this is an older fabric and I've already had other scraps of it that I've cut up. So I'm thinking, well, I might decide to just keep this in the light bin and not cut it anymore, just put it back in the bin. Because what happened is with these stacks, I was just kind of dumping stuff as I was working. I got extra pieces and I'll show you an example of what that is. It's like when I was working with the big orange quilt and I had uh, Betty's luncheonette, this is a layer cake square. And so it ended up in this pile because it was one that didn't get left over. I didn't have any more, so I couldn't make any more blocks for that quilt. And so there are like, here's another one, here's another one. So like three Betty's luncheonette blocks that are already 10, 10 inch squares from layer cake. So what I might do is just keep these as 10 inch squares because I'm cutting two and a half squares, two and a half strips, uh, five inch like a charm pack and 10 inch like layer cakes because there's so many patterns for all of those. So these I might just keep the same. But then here is like, this is from the backing of my little nephew's baby quilt, the baby traffic jam. And so I will probably cut like five inch squares out of this. And who knows, I might then use those in some other kind of a quilt. And then I look through here on this, on this grouping and I have like, oh, here's perfect. So I have this one, this, this is it. That's all I have of that. So I will cut some two and a half inch squares. Now I don't keep what's left over, like these little triangles, there'll be stuff that just gets tossed in my world. Uh, and if you in your world can't do that, then you need to figure out how to handle those little strips, those little, you know, like some people make strip quilts, some people will save them to give the other people who make strip quilts, or uh, there are people who do like, um, what they, they do like doggy uh, beds, you know, so there's like dog beds that uh, they'll fill the, the um, like a pill, to think a pillowcase, and they'll fill it with all the scraps and then do some basic quilting over it and use it for dog beds often at uh, um, charity, you know, 
what's the word, uh, humane shelters, you know, that, that kind of a thing. They'll take it there because they can either be washed or just tossed when they get like too bad. But at least it's a little bit of softness and a bedding to, to put down for the animals. Uh, so that, so I've approached these piles of scraps. I know I don't keep bags of scraps. I just, I don't have space for it. And I know myself when I did it in the past, I did not use it. So you have to know yourself. If you keep a zillion scraps and you use a zillion scraps, perfect. But if you're like me and you don't have a lot of space and you can't keep a zillion scraps, then you need to be refined and uh, know how you really want to do things. You know, like how, how do I really want to approach that? And if you want to make it really simple, use the the pre-cut sizes and then even then just maybe just stick to just one pre-cut size or two you don't have to do all of them like right now i'm not really keeping 10 inch squares at all so like those ones from betty's luncheonette i'm like eh, i'll probably cut them down uh probably either to fives or two and a halves because right now i'm not keeping 10 inch squares i have several beautiful coordinated layer cakes that haven't been made into quilts yet so they'll go first and I will much more likely use the two and a half or the fives than I would a 10 at this point in time. Later might be different. So that is how all, that's how I'm handling all of this. And I wanna get through these uh, because it's, I, as I'm working on some other things now, I'm going to be generating more. And if I can, I will cut the two and a half or the fives as I'm working. So if I finish a project, I'll cut them. Because as I have a bunch of small things that I'm doing for my next book that I'm working on, which I know I've talked about for a long time, but I had to take a break and, and not work on it. So I'm now back working on it. Uh, so I'll try not to talk about it too much because <laughs> it takes a while. <laughs> but I'm gonna be generating little bits and parts and scraps. So I need to address uh, how to, I need to, to keep on top of it, that's the word. I need to keep on top of it. So if I cut them as it happens, I'll be good. Like my bins though, my shoe bins are get, getting <clears throat> very full. I didn't bring one of them up here, but it's a standard clear shoe boxes and those are the two and a half inch squares and I have like five of them I think that are, are almost all entirely full. So that means that I need to zoom along with like this little bin, which is my working bin right by the machine to get things done. Okay, so I wanted to show you one other thing because I shared a picture of the studio here this morning uh, with like behind the scenes, showed you the lighting and the camera set up. Uh, and, I, and I have a sign in my studio. Oops, did I move that? <laughs> I have a sign in my studio, which is all the way in the back there called, uh, Quilt maker, you know, it's the letters, pieced letters. And a couple people asked me where did that come from? And it is from this book. The letters are from this book. And the letters in here come in two sizes. I think they're six and 12. Uh, so, and then tons of patterns. Like you can do the little alphabet quilt, but then you see on the back, there's a stack of quilts. You can use little mini, you can make like little mini quilts like this or just create words uh, that sh that you want to do. Like there's, here's all of them side by side, bigger blocks. This one is the, this is the images that are in the book. So it's not just the letters. Um, there they did a banner there. See, there's a banner. I think that's pretty cute. So I actually did the whole alphabet. Besides the quilt maker, I did the whole alphabet and we have some of the other blocks. Look at that, look at that, look how cute he is. Where's some of the other blocks I got here? There's a little car. That one's a little, maybe a little mushy on fabric. There's, whoops. Wait, you guys see the little house. There's a little house. Look at the bear. I love, I, I have been collecting these cute little fabrics to put in there because, you know, the, the, little, um, the little boy that I sent the baby quilt to, the traffic jam, Elliot, has two brothers who are older. So I'm thinking that I spy quilt, this alphabet. There's the world needs to go, needs to get made sooner rather than later. Uh, so that I can 
I can send this out. So if you like the Alphabet book, it is 40% off right now, Connecting Threads, uh, This when this video is being taped. Uh, so when you're seeing this. So if you're watching it months down the road, it's still a fabulous book, but it won't be that percentage off. So I'm going to link you to that. Hopefully you can get a copy during the sale because why not? Why not? All right. What do I have back here? I have some other things. Ah, do you remember? Okay. I told you starting when Black Wednesday is childhood games. So I've got all my fabric ready. I'm so excited. I have to make the block. I've got the pattern, but I haven't made the block. That is tomorrow's project for me. So I get to figure out which fabrics. It is going to be so much fun. Okay, so because Valentine's Day is coming up, I wanted to give you time to do this. Uh, it's one that I did last year. Uh, and actually, there's still some of this fabric left, which is so darling. Look at the fabric. Look how cute that is. I just, do I have it upside down? I do. The hearts were upside down. I can't have that. Whoop. Making a mess here. There we go. So you can see where, where the where those hearts go. There they are. I love it, love it, love it. And so the, the little uh, pad, my little pattern is called Hello Love. And I used it, used the buttons from the button club at Fat Quarter Shop. Uh, so that was a fun month. There's some in the corner I did. So you could hang this because I'm thinking of hanging it. I have a space in my kitchen there that actually I hang quilts on because it has the wall phone jack in the wall and we don't have a wall phone anymore. <laughs> so I have to cover it up with a quilt. So this will be perfect to hang there. But I'll link you to the pattern and you can make one of those. It's super quick, uses five inch squares. You can dig in your scraps or if you love that fabric, you can grab some of that. I'll have that link too. Oh, and thank you for using my links. Uh, when you're watching this video, down in the in the text part, under every video there is text. It not only links to my website where, where I have more photos of things, like I'll have a whole picture of that, uh, but also it just has all the links to everything that I'm talking about. So I thank you for using my links that help support our small family business and it doesn't cost you anything else. It's uh, something that, that I have a partnership with a few companies and so that is why uh, I'm able to uh, keep my business running because of you. Mwah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's do true confession time. True confession is my cross stitch. I did work on it. Da, 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 da. I'm so excited. So this is the pattern I decided to try because I decided I needed to have something smaller that I could finish easier. And last week when we were chatting, I had actually started, here's I had started the January, which is the big, the big picture. And I came to the realization I wasn't going to finish January in January to enjoy it and I would want to have February. But February for Valentine's Day, you can see the Valentine, I thought, I'm not getting that done either by Valentine, before Valentine's Day so I could enjoy it. It's like, it is, it is not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. So I decided, I asked her advice, should I just go to March? And everybody said, go to March, go to March. <laughs> so, ta-da, here is March in progress. I have gotten, so, so what I did is I have these little tins which, you know, there's lots of these little tins available. I'll link you to them if, you, if you're if you looking for little tins. They're like, like little pencil tins, uh, little, but they fit the thread beautifully. So there I've got thread and I've got the flower floss winders. And then what I do is I put one of the pin holder magnets on here. You can see on the back side, there's the other side of the magnets. And I put it on here so I'm working, I can just lay the pin, the needle there, and I don't lose it. So here's another one. These little skinnier ones also hold the, I'm using the Aurifil floss, so they hold that nicely. Uh, this is a pin cushion given to me by a friend, and so I stuck it in there. I've got my scissors on top, and I use, let me get it out here. I use the Clover um, needle threader, and this is, where can I put it? There you go. Uh, so this is a needle threader. And you put this into the eye of the needle. 
me see. Let's see if we can do this here. I don't have, let me just get a, I've got the, there's the needle threader and I need a piece of, need a piece of thread. So, okay, here's one. Let's get in a little closer. So basically you're taking, this is a lot of thread at the moment on here. I think it's four ply on there. Oh, I'm going to do the kid thing. I'm going to lick it. Sorry. All right. So I am putting the thread through the opening of the needle threader. So it's got like a, you know, it's, it's got a, a wide slit. So it's easy to put that in there. And now what I would do would be to take the needle which is over here, and then I take the end of that and push it. Oh, I forgot, I have to put that on first. Never mind, never mind. I didn't practice demoing first. Okay, so you put the needle on first. You just put it the eye of the needle, you put this metal thing through the eye. I gotta get you on the white here. Put that through the eye of the needle, and then you take this through the opening, and then when you pull the needle off, it threads it, and there you go. I'm all threaded. So this is super nice, and it's used for the bigger eye needles. Has, you keep the cover on it because that metal, you don't want to bend it out of whack in your project tin or your project bag. So I am very excited. Here is my March in progress, and March has a little, where is he? It has like a little leprechaun body and it says luck, a bunch of little uh, clover leaves. So I am, I am excited that I can finish March. And what I've been doing, let me just tell you this, because I think it's important. And it's something that I've done in the past, but haven't done recently. Back when I did lots and lots and lots of hand applique, I always had like a basket or a tin or a bin or a tote bag with zipper bags in it. And that I would have with me all the time. Like wherever I went, I would just take that and I could just pull it out and I could applique a little bit when I was hand applique. And then over time, I've not been doing that much of that. And when I came to this, I, what I was originally doing here for this cross stitch is I was putting it back in the bin over here. I would put it all back and then I didn't work on it and I would forget about it or I would be somewhere else and I would think, oh, well, I could work on it, but it's in the bin, in a bag and blah, blah, blah. So what I did, <laughs> so what I did for this is I went to the, put it on the back side on my work table, which I didn't have anything, you know, I had a space and I just laid it there. And then I would, during the day, if I needed a little break, I would come and stitch just a little bit. So t tomorrow, that's going back on the work table so that I can do that again and be able to stitch just a little bit at a time. So I don't ever get, uh, get it, you're putting it back into a bin and a plastic bag and a shelf, you know, that's death. You know, all of a sudden you are just not, you can see that these are all my cross stitch stuff. It doesn't get worked on. Doesn't happen. So that is my goal. And I also had found another neat thing, two neat things. If you haven't seen these, they, if you like to do your floss on these kind of things rather than like the little flowers, I like these flowers. Um, but also these rings, these are nice too if you want to hang all your pieces off of there. Uh, I like that. And then I had to get this because it's so darn cute. There we go. It's, and I don't think it has to be wintry, even though I think it has a snowflake on the cup. I think I might change that to a heart. Uh, that's so cute. So if I get March done in plenty of time and start April, then I might just scoot one of these little coffee mugs in there for myself to work on. I don't know. It just sounds like a good idea to me. So if you are a cross stitcher or a want to try it haven't done it in a long time maybe you'll pick it back up with me work on the charity one so i have not started that i have to look at my
bad. This is the big hole that I use. This is a 10 Ada, um, and it's called Vintage something. I'll link to it. Uh, and I might just do it on this because I think I have another big piece of this, and this, I believe, is big enough. It tells you at the website uh, how big the cross stitch is. So that should be fun. A bunch of us can do the cross stitch. And if you are an expert cross stitcher, I can't wait to see your work. If you're like me, just do it. We only learn by doing. We only get better by doing. It's my philosophy for the day. So I think I've showed you everything. All righty. <laughs> In February, I have some other fun things coming up. Uh, so there's always good stuff. Always, always good stuff. And I love what's going on in the Facebook group. So many of you are really working on like your scrap management, which is awesome. I've seen some really amazing progress and lots of traffic jam blocks. So I am going to be continuing to work on traffic jam blocks because I think they're fun and use up some fabric. Um, if you're doing scrap busting, you could also use my Oh My Stars because those are five inch squares and uh, from a charm pack, like a charm pack. So you could just make your own set of five inch squares of coordinate from your scraps. And uh, I would use like then like really tonal or solid stars in a color that really pops against uh, your variety. If you want to make it super scrappy, that would, be, that would be cute. I've seen that done, it's really nice. Doing something like a black star, a white star, a red star, which is just more like solid. It just makes it pop away from the, um, from the quilt. So this week I also want to do a giveaway. I have a goodie, a little bag of goodies here that I'll send to somebody. Fun, fun, fun stuff. So I have to think. So you, you can tell me. So here's, here's what I'm going to give. I have a whole set of these aqua, the aqua fabrics, which are from the colorful the So Colorful Bundles, which the Fat Quarter Shop does. This is the an aqua bundle, which is so, so cute. Could make a lot, you could make, you could make all kinds of stuff. These are Fat Quarters, so you could make tons of quilts with this. And then I have my friend Celine, it's a guide marker, perfect seam guides. And so this is also part of this. <clears throat> Got a nice little Ulfa rotary cutter and also from a rotary cutter mat I'm sorry the little mat which is perfect I keep these by my sewing machine put my tools on so they don't scratch the bed of the machine and then the little exacto knife a little um, knife cutter from them like a little box cutter and the cute little rotary cutter charm plus a blue to go with the fabric or fill thread so this will go out to to somebody go live with you instead of living here uh, so I need to you need to answer the question at my website not here but at my website and tell me uh, do you cross stitch do you do any kind of handwork do you cross stitch do you do English paper piecing do you hand applique do you do um, embroidery I'd love to know what kind of handwork you do and tell me a little bit about it and what kind of project you're working on so I'm Pat Sloan. I am so excited to have you here and I can't wait to chat with you online over at Facebook in my Quilt Along group or in the comments at any of the other places that I see you. I love you. You are an amazing, amazing community. Thank you for being part of my life. The end of January, next month, February. See you then.